Something metallic is bleeding through space. And it's not from Earth. As the object known as Three-Eye Atlas slices across the solar system at over 130,000 MEPA, astronomers detected something that instantly shattered expectations. This wasn't just another icy traveller from a distant star. This was a visitor leaking nearly 10 Libby of pure nickel every single second. Not a random blend of cosmic debris, not a mixture of iron and dust, but refined nickel separated and isolated in a way that nature doesn't normally do. What's even more chilling is what's missing. Iron, the cosmic sibling to nickel forged together in the nuclear hearts of dying stars, was practically absent. The composition was so unnatural, so refined, that scientists began to whisper the unthinkable that this might not be a comet or an asteroid. It might not even be natural. And then came the signals. Deep within the data, across different observatories and space-based sensors, faint but deliberate pulses began to show up. Patterns that lined up not with natural radio emissions or cosmic background radiation, but with intentional structure. The world of science went from awe to confusion, and from confusion to fear. Because if Three-Eye Atlas isn't a rock, then what is it? When researchers first spotted Three-Eye Atlas from a Chilean survey telescope on July 1st, 2025, it was already moving at blistering speed. At first glance, it seemed like a rare but welcome guest, an interstellar object, only the third ever detected in our solar system. But celebration quickly shifted to concern when spectral analysis from the very large telescope began to return data. The coma surrounding the object, that faint halo of gas and particles, wasn't made of the usual water vapor, ice, or carbon compounds. It was leaking pure nickel. In cosmic terms, nickel is not rare, but pure nickel without iron. That's like finding a gold bar in the middle of a coal mine. It simply doesn't happen naturally on Earth. Separating nickel from iron requires intense industrial processes, smelting, chemical separation, and lots of energy. It's a technology, not a coincidence. The fact that this object was doing it in space and on a scale, never before observed, set off alarms. One Harvard astrophysicist made it blunt. This isn't a rock. It's engineered. And just like that, the narrative surrounding Three-Eye Atlas transformed from scientific curiosity into potential contact. Further studies deepened the mystery. The James Webb Space Telescope, with its unmatched infrared precision, peered into the emissions of Three-Eye Atlas and made a stunning discovery. Not only was the object shedding metallic nickel, but it also had the highest carbon dioxide to water ratio ever observed in any comet. Eight parts CO2 to one part water. For reference, the comets in our solar system typically hover around 4% CO2. This was an object built of entirely different materials. The composition wasn't just strange. It was incompatible with any known formation process in our solar system. If it came from a distant star, it should have traces of familiar elements, patterns and balances. But Three-Eye Atlas didn't obey any of those rules. It was unique, alien and deliberate. It felt more like a payload than a natural body, a capsule carrying materials with a purpose. But the question echoed louder each day, what purpose? If its makeup raised eyebrows, its trajectory sent chills down spines. Interstellar objects don't usually play nice with our planetary alignment. They arrive on unpredictable curves, passing quickly through the system untouched and unbothered. But Three-Eye Atlas seemed to be doing the opposite. It passed near Venus, then Mars, then Jupiter all in a single flyby sequence so statistically improbable that scientists calculated the odds at 0.005%. To make matters worse, its orbit wasn't just unusual, it was retrograde. Instead of moving with the flow of planetary orbits, it travelled against the grain like a car going the wrong way on a one-way street, slowly, as if observing, as if planning. And its perihelion, the point where it would be closest to the sun, occurred behind the sun, shielded from our best instruments, as if someone or something didn't want us to watch during its most active phase. Each of these choices, the flybys, the trajectory, the retrograde motion, would be impossible to explain if this were a natural object. But if it was designed, suddenly everything made sense. As Three-Eye Atlas travelled deeper into the system, signals began to appear. Not audio messages or visible lights, but metallic signatures embedded in the ratios of its emissions. 
Some researchers believe this could be a form of communication, not in words or sounds, but in composition. The idea is as old as SETI itself. Any intelligent civilization might embed a message not in sound, but in mathematics and chemistry ratios that any scientifically literate species would recognize. One theory proposes that the nickel to carbon ratio, the missing iron and the extreme CO2 levels are part of an encoded sequence, a metallic Morse code embedded within the object's very structure. Perhaps not a message meant to be read immediately, but a long-term transmission, a signal in physical form, one that would only be noticed by a civilization capable of advanced spectroscopy. In other words, us. The idea that this could be a von Neumann probe, a self-replicating robotic scout, has resurfaced with renewed vigor. Because if the signal is meant to be interpreted, then the object is not a traveler. It's a test. Soon after the trajectory analysis went public, a series of subtle anomalies were reported by observatories tracking nearby asteroids. A cluster of objects in the asteroid belt began to show minute but measurable shifts in their paths, shifts that couldn't be explained by solar radiation pressure, collisions or any known gravitational interaction. The only common denominator, each of these objects had recently passed within several million kilometers of 3I Atlas's trajectory. This hinted at something terrifying, localized gravitational manipulation. In other words, 3I Atlas was affecting the space around it in ways no natural object should. It wasn't just interacting with our system, it was changing it. Scientists at the European Space Agency called it gravitational whispering, a term used to describe gravitational distortions so faint they're almost untraceable unless you're looking for them. The implications were massive. If 3I Atlas can alter the orbits of other bodies subtly and consistently, it might be mapping the gravitational topology of our solar system or worse, probing how easy it would be to destabilize it. The James Webb then delivered another piece of the puzzle and it only made things darker. Using its mid-infrared instrument MIRI, the telescope measured not only the reflected heat from the sun on 3I Atlas's surface, but also internal emissions from within. The results defied every known law of passive thermodynamics. Instead of cooling as it moved away from the sun, the core of 3I Atlas grew warmer. This pattern made no sense unless the object was generating heat internally. This was not heat from outgassing, friction or radioactive decay. It was too steady, too uniform and too controlled. It behaved like a reactor, not a rock, a stable heat signature pulsing at regular intervals. The emissions formed a wave that repeated every 51.2 minutes and then suddenly dropped to 17 bouts 07 minutes. This shift in rhythm was later found to match precisely with the timing between the object's gravitational whispers. This was no coincidence. This was coordination. Just as things couldn't seem more uncanny, a detection from Earth's own moon changed everything. The Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, circling the moon for over a decade, picked up a bizarre electromagnetic echo on its far side, a signal that mirrored the metallic frequency signatures emitted by 3I Atlas. This wasn't just a distant broadcast, it was a reflection, as if something on or beneath the lunar surface was resonating with the same frequency. That meant either the signal from 3I Atlas had reached and activated something on the moon, or that something was already there waiting to respond. Either way, it introduced an idea so bold it was nearly dismissed, that 3I Atlas is not alone and that our own moon might be part of its intended route. If the moon was seated or prepared for contact long ago, then this object might be coming not to discover, but to reconnect. Then silence. After weeks of increasingly structured emissions, frequency pulses, thermal waves and gravitational disturbances, it all stopped. The object became quiet. No more pulses, no more nickel loss, no more temperature fluctuations. At first, scientists believed it was a sensor error. But when multiple observatories confirmed the same thing, total emission silence, panic set in. This wasn't a gradual fading. It was a deliberate shutoff. Something had changed. Some even speculated the object had completed a transmission or gone into stealth mode. The timing was too perfect. It happened precisely one hour after the moon's echo was recorded. It was as if 3I Atlas had sent a signal, received a reply and then vanished into strategic dormancy. That's not the behavior of an object. That's the behavior of an intelligence.
As the silence dragged on, researchers turned back to the previous emissions, applying newer AI-powered signal analysis tools to re-examine what had once seemed like ambient noise. What they found shook the radio astronomy community. Buried within the earlier metallic signal streams were high-frequency microbursts, almost imperceptible without enhanced decomposition.